Now, part A begs the question, what if you can't write both sides with the same base? What do you do? So let's look at part B. In part B, okay, you're gonna need to have three to the x by itself. Look at what we have in part B. You have two times three to the x equals eight. That's what we have in part B. It, the, the exponential function part of it is three to the x, and there's a factor of two in front of that. And it's gonna be necessary to isolate, whenever possible, the exponential function part. So we have two attached by multiplication. How do I, how do I get it to the other side? Okay, so I'm gonna do that first of all. So isolate the exponential function, get three to the x equals uh, four. And now it doesn't look all that much different than something like that, right? Except there's no nice way to write three as a power of two or four, and there's no nice way um, to write four as a power of three. So that method from part A fails. Well, there's one obvious thing we could do, hopefully, right now. This is in exponential form. What could we do? Convert it to log form. W won't that solve it right away? Isn't the logarithm form the exponent? Isn't a logarithm an exponent, in other words? So what is 3 to the x equals 4 in logarithmic notation? x equals log base 3 of 4. Now, students get the wrong idea. Anybody remember from the video what the wrong idea here is about this notation? What is log base three of four not? It's not log of three to the fourth power, is it? Students get the wrong idea about this all the time. This is not three to the fourth power. It's, an understandably, it's understandable why students get that wrong idea, right? But it's notation, no. So what you have to group together is the log with its subscript of three. That's the name of the function, log base three. It's like f of four. The input is four, log base three is the name of the function. So anyway, um, that's an answer, isn't it? And if you needed to, you could run that through your calculator. But I do wanna show you a way that works more generally. This won't, this method of converting to logarithmic form won't work nicely when you get more complicated exponential equations. So I wanna show you the general method that will work. So that's, I mean, that's an answer, that works. But now um, let's start over again with three to the x equals four. And I'm gonna use the, the property down here that basically says, going from right to left, if I have x equals y, I can insert both the x and the y into the, the same log function, and it'll still be a true statement. In other words, this is dangerous to say this, but ha this is how most people think of it. I can take the log of both sides. We're used to thinking of it that way because of the balance principle, but it's not multiplication. You're really inserting both sides in the log function. So the idea is I can take the log. Uh, we usually use base 10 or base e because those are the most common logarithms on your calculators. So I'm gonna take log base 10, which means no, you don't show the base, you just, you just leave it L-O-G. So really what I'm doing is I'm making three to the x the input of the log base 10 function, okay? And then I'm making four the input of the log base 10 function. I'm inserting both sides into the log, the common logarithm function. Okay, so what does that allow us? There's a rule that allows us to do something with that x to bring it out of the exponent. What does that rule say? It says you can bring it down in front. Remember the power rule? This is why the power rule is so important. It allows us to solve exponential equations by taking logs of both sides after maybe having simplified a little bit and uh, we can get the variables out of the exponent that way. So that's, that's the power rule. It allows me to bring down that x and rewrite the left-hand side as x times log of three. Remember, the parentheses are, uh, around the three are optional. Equals log of four. I put them in there sometimes to remind you that the three and the four are inputs, but you don't have to have those parentheses there. Just remember, it's log of three does not mean log times three. 
Log of three really means like f a function of three. The three is the input of the function. But now what is multiplication here? What, what is multiplication? This operation, right? Between the x and the log of three. So how can I get x by itself? I can divide both sides by log of three. I can divide both sides by log of three. And then goes away here and I have another answer. X equals log of four divided by log of three. Is that the same as, as this other answer we got? If you apply the change of base formula to this, you get log of four, log base 10 of four, divided by log base 10 of three. It's the same answer. In a more convenient form because your calculator has a LOG function readily available. Would it be easy enough to get a decimal approximation of that? Yeah, let's practice that. So uh, LOG button is just kind of almost a little further than midway down from the top on the left-hand side of column of buttons. So LOG of four divided by LOG log three. You get about 1.26 if you round to two decimal places. So one thing that's important to me that you understand is that um, when we write down that 1.26 approximate, it's a wavy equal sign, it's approximate, right? So this 1.26 is an estimate of the answer. And log four divided by log of three is exact. So know the difference. It's important to know what's exact and what's not. The nice thing about exact answers, if you need a more accurate estimate, you can always get it later on. If you just write down 1.26 and, and forget about the rest of your work, you can't improve on that estimate. 